Bob Fawcett Stadium in Canton, Ohio. It's the Division IV State Championship game. The 12 and 2 Alter Knights from Kettering take on the undefeated 14 and 0 Steubenville Big Red. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Underwood alongside Matt DeRazio here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton on a gorgeous afternoon for football. I say gorgeous, yeah, it's a little bit cool, but it's dry and that's the most important thing when you're playing for a championship. You really don't want the weather to play a role and it should not here this afternoon. Matt, I'm really excited for this matchup because these are the two teams that should be the best two teams in the state in Division Four. Many thought Coldwater would be the team here playing against Steubenville, but Kettering Alter knocked them off, and so here you have the matchup. And Matt, when you look at these two teams offensively, very similar. They both average over 400 yards a game. When you look at Steubenville, they average 38 points a game, Kettering Alter over 40 points a game. Yeah, and they're, they're led by quarterbacks that were co-offensive players of the year, and it's gonna be who plays the best today to lead their team to this victory. Talking about the co-players of the year offensively in Division IV, Dwight Macon, the uh, big red quarterback, he is only a junior, but how impressive is it for a junior quarterback to complete over 70% of his passes and only throw three interceptions in a 14-game season to this point? Unbelievable, so impressive. As a starter, he's 26-1, and one, and he's got another year left. This kid can do it all. Now, of course, you're talking about the uh, Kettering Alter football team. Uh, this is a ball club we talked about a little bit in our preview. Uh, earlier, Boucher, offensively, he's the trigger man. You've got Borland, who runs it downhill. But the guy that Reno Sukkosh, the Steubenville head coach, said to be aware of is the fullback, somewhat overlooked maybe by some other schools. Uh, but Justin Hall, he can average over seven yards a carry as well. Yeah, he's one of three guys in the backfield that can run that ball and are averaging over seven yards a carry. He's got nine touchdowns. He's one of those guys, if, if he's not running the ball, he's also making blocks. So he's someone that you have to be ready for and you got to be prepared to stop. You know, this alter attack, it's, it's different in that in this day and age, you're so used to seeing the spread offense, the wide open passing attack, and yet they're a little bit old school. They run that wishbone and they love to run the football. In fact, I think if they had their way, they'd run it every play. Yeah, and it's <laughs> led by that senior center, Evan Neff, three-year starter, and he leads the way. He's going to Ball State, D1 pro, uh, star, and um, if, he, if he leads the way, those guys are going to be running all night. You're talking about a team that, you know, they'll run it 300 yards per game. That is very impressive. Now, again, the quarterback, Boucher, he's what makes them a different animal of this now because he, he can throw it, and he can throw it very well. Yeah, he's a great athlete. He, he, can, he can run the ball, as you, can, as you see, 13 touchdowns, but he can throw it well. 21 touchdowns, only three interceptions, and he's big. I mean, he's a big guy with a strong arm. All right, now defensively, both of these teams very stingy. They don't allow many points. They don't allow many yards. So, I mean, it tru truly is the irresistible force and the immovable object on both sides of the ball here today. Yeah, these defenses, not many returning starters on either one, but the teams have grown up fast, and they've got young guys playing big. Something to remember, Alter very opportunistic on defense. They forced 25 turnovers this year. The Alter Knights have taken the field. We're just moments away from kickoff. Stick around, coming back for the Division Four State Championship game in Canton. Let's go down now and meet the third member of our telecast crew here this afternoon, Katie Witham. Thank you, Matt. You know, getting that early score and on the board first is so important for both of these programs. And when I spoke with the head coaches earlier this week, their keys to success today, very similar. At the top of the list, taking care of that football and not making any major mistakes, getting the ball to move there on the field and finishing tackles. And the third thing they all told me was they've got to limit the amount of damage, damage the opposing quarterback can do. Matt, you and Matt spoke about Dwight Makeham and Austin Boucher and how capable both of these guys are. And you know what? In a game like today, it might very well come down to that quarterback play. Good point, Katie. And both of these quarterbacks, Matt, I think would relish the opportunity to have the game in their hands with the game on the line in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's the type of guys they are. They've taken charge of each of their teams and they've led them to the state championship. And uh, it, it's kind of, as a quarterback, that's all you want to do. You want to win. You know, they almost have identical records as starters. We mentioned uh, Macon, 26 and one. Well, don't forget about Austin Boucher. He's 25 and one, has never lost a regular season game as a starter. The Alto Knights came in to this game 12 and two, but only because they had two early season forfeits because an ineligible player had inadvertently been used in the game. 
So this could ideally be a matchup of two 14 and 0 teams. It really is. Yeah, and that's the way you know you look at it. And, and you know, they won the games on the field, but uh, and they got in the playoffs, and that was for the the in the region. They got seated six, but they came out of it. You got to beat you know got to beat the best to get out of it, and they beat Coldwater. So they certainly they certainly made up for that those two losses on the record. Brennan Stover tees it up for the Steubenville Big Red. Back to return for Alter, Connor Cummins, and Danny Jasper. And we are underway in Kenton. On the return, this is Connor Cummins. Across the 25, still on his feet off to the 33-yard line. And that's where the Alter Knights will put it in play, first and 10. This is an Alter offense, as we talked about in the open that averages 43 points per game and over 400 yards of offense per game, thanks in part to Austin Boucher. Yeah, he, he is an unbelievable quarterback that takes care of the football. As an offense, they only have nine turnovers this year, three interceptions and six fumbles. That's impressive. They come in the wishbone formation. Danny Jasper split wide to the near side. Justin Hall is the fullback. He leads the way and hit immediately and down goes Chris Moreland. Oh, what a stick. The Big Red defense coming up with a stop of no gain on first down. Let's take a look at the starting lineup first for the Alter Knights, brought to you by Serpentini Chevrolet. Wax Plunkett, Joe Thune, Evan Neff, John Endress, and Ryan Cronin. Big physical offensive line. And here are the specialty guys, Boucher, Borland. They're the key guys. Jasper is a very good receiver. On the keeper. Boucher finds a tough going, picked up about two, maybe three yards. It'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, it looks like uh, a lot of momentum just early in, in two plays. Goes to Steubenville, and there's some excitement on the sideline. Here's the Steubenville Big Red defensive starting lineup. Elder Campbell. Dugan is a very good one. So is Jarrell Christian up front. Bronco Busick, the defensive player of the year in Division Four, anchors the linebacking core. Gilbert Willis, Carroll, and Jackson in the secondary. Third down, call it seven. Boucher to throw. And he misfires, looking for Jasper, had him open, threw it behind him. Yeah, definitely an open receiver, just a misfire, one of those miscommunication things, uh, something you work on all week, and then you get into the big game, and maybe there's a little bit of nerves, and, and uh, you know, you run your first pass route, and you're not on the same page as your receiver. So a three and out for the all tonight's, and back to punt is number four, Chris Borland. And back to return for the Steubenville Big Red, he is number 13, Michael Del Prince. He's all by his lonesome, backing up. It's over his head. It's going to roll down inside the five and into the end zone for a touchback. Wow. He almost downed that at the one yard line, but he just couldn't get the ball batted back out of the end zone. Matt, you know, we always, I've always said football is a game of inches, and right there, I mean, that, that changes the perspective of the whole game. You get the ball on the one yard line to start your first drive in the state championship game, or you get at the 20, and Steubenville gets to the 20 right now. That was Caleb Westlake, by the way, not Michael Del Prince, back on the return for the Big Red. No harm done. They'll take it over first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Dwight Macon, over 2,200 yards, 27 touchdowns, just the three interceptions. And he can run it as well, averaging five yards a carry. The motion man is Sage Kutry, and they'll throw it on first down. And it's complete, down the middle of the field, all the way to the 45 yard line. A completion of number 44, Danny Bain. A little play action fake, and right down to Steve. Looks like Coach Irino Sakoc got aggressive here, a little play action to start, the, to start their drive, a little tight end pop right over the middle, caught Alter off guard. And Bain right up the middle for a big game. That's the way you want to start if you're uh, if you're Steubenville. Bronco Busick starting the game at the tailback spot. He is a two-way player, but during the regular season, they try to limit him to just playing defense just to try to save some wear and tear. But there are no more games after today. All hands on deck. Bacon swings it out. That's Kutry. It's a short game. Good tackle made by number four, Chris Borland. And it'll bring up second down at about seven. Well, Coach Reno Sakoc is definitely coming out aggressive. Two passes on, on two plays, two completions, and uh, it's no surprise to me with Dwight Macon and his completion percentage at 70, and the way he throws the football, that's the way you come out. Jamie Duvall, Heatherington Banks, Campbell and Tugan up front for the Big Red in the backfield. Macon, McIntyre, Demetrius Brandon, and then Wiggins, Carroll, and Kutry 
are the receivers. On second and seven, making on the keeper. Brought down after a short pickup. It'll be third and a long four. Matt, I know we've talked about uh, these stats, but honestly, it, they're almost ridiculous and, and with what Macon has done this year. Cervantini, Chevrolet starting lineup for the Alter defense. Casella, Bonanno, Anderson, Sauer, and Lancaster up front. The linebackers are Bachrath and Borland, and then four in the secondary. And this is a very opportunistic secondary. 10 interceptions for the Alter Knights. Third and four, opening drive for Big Red. And Bacon goes down for a loss of a yard. He tried to keep it, but it looked like Philip Sauer got him from his defensive end spot. He had 84 tackles during the regular season. Yeah, and Alter brought pressure right there, right up the middle, right where Steubenville was going. It was a great defensive call to counter uh, Steubenville and what they were doing. And it looks like uh, Alter's defense is definitely answered. So after the big pop pass to the tight end, Steubenville's drive stalls, and they'll put it away. Corey Mason. And here's the boot. Down near the 20-yard line, and it will be down there. No return. Big red punt down at the 21-yard line. So Alter will put it in play first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. And there is head coach Ed Domsites. 226 career wins, 150 of them at Kettering Alter. He was the runner-up in 2006. On a first down play, Borland in motion. Boucher gives to the fullback, and down goes Justin Hall for no gain. This big red defense is definitely keying on that run early, and they've come to play. Yeah, and the one thing they do well is they move around. Right before the snap, their defensive linemen, they'll shift and they'll make it hard for those offensive linemen to know who they're going to block, and that gives those linebackers to, like Bronco Busick a chance to fly up and make big plays. Second down and 10 after a no game. Boucher will go to the shotgun. He's got four receivers. Borland goes in motion. Boucher, all kinds of time to throw, hits his man. It'll be close to a first down. On the reception was Eric Boss, the tight end. Matt, you said it, all day to throw. We, you know, we were talking before the game, Matt, and this offensive line for Alta is one of the best we've seen, not only for run blocking, but they proved it right there for pass blocking, and, and Boucher had a lot of time. If he has that much time all day, it could be a long day for the Big Red. Third down, less than a yard. Justin Hall, the lone setback now, Borland in motion. Boucher gives it to Hall, it's a first down. Hall takes it out to the 36 yard line. Carries it for a first down, Knights. And the Alter Knights have their first, first down of the afternoon. And there's that triple option out of the, Boucher's reading it, he gives it to his fullback just to get that yard. Falls forward to get that yard. Now you're getting some kind of a rhythm. You get a first down, you got the chains moving offensively. You start to get in a little bit of a rhythm. On the stop that time for Steubenville was Dwight Macon, their quarterback. So number of guys going two ways here this afternoon in the championship tilt. No score, first quarter. Boucher on the keeper, lots of room to run. Inside the 40, the 30. Macon cuts it down at the 16 yard line. Boucher's Everybody keyed on the fullback. Boucher pulled it out and had tons of room to run. And that's his job. He's got to read that down line, and he gives the ball if he crashes. If he doesn't crash, he crashes there. He pulls it out, and he goes around the corner. You can see what kind of athlete this guy is, and that's why he's going Salido. Showed some wheels there on the edge, and quarterback on the other side, Macon, runs him down. A gain of 50 yards for Boucher. First and 10 now for the Alter Knights. Boucher a keeper again, and he's hammered this time right at the line of scrimmage. And it looked like number 49, Gerald Christian, from his defensive end position, hammered him to the turf. You see Boucher, that's what he's done running the football this year. At another 1,600 yards passing. And you can see why he and Dwight Bacon of Steubenville were the co-offensive players of the year in Division Four. 
On a second down and eight, Boucher to throw. Swings it out, got him in. It's Danny Jasper, and he is down short of the first down. It'll be third and about two. Now it looks like there might have been a blown assignment there for Steubenville. Didn't get lined up correctly, left a receiver wide open, and you know someone like Austin Boucher definitely, definitely will recognize that right away. I think that was Jasper with a nice catch and nice recognition by Austin Boucher. Looked like they may have caught him in a blitz. Yeah. Just left him a little short-handed in the secondary. Third and two from the eight-yard line. Boucher throws to Borland, first down, touchdown! That's the sixth touchdown as a receiver this year for Chris Borland, who made a catch and then a nice spin move to the end zone. Yeah, nice athletic move. We, we talked about him running the ball, 18 touchdowns, 8.8 .8 yards to carry, but right here, just in the little slot, does a little five yard hitch. Defense is playing a little far off. He made a nice catch and a great move. The extra point is up and good. And with 4.54 to go in the first quarter, the Alternites have struck first. They lead seven to nothing in the Division Four State Championship game. Back here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton, first quarter action. The Alternites get on the board with a nice third down passing play and a good move by Borland to elude the tackle and into the end zone easily for the touchdown. Now Danny Jasper will kick it away. And a great boot into the end zone for a touchback. It's not like we have a lot of wind today. That was just one whale of a kick. Yeah, that was a great kick. Jasper got a hold of it. Just true athlete using everybody they can to, to, to win this football game. 79 yards on seven plays. Of course, the big play was the run by Boucher of 50 yards that set him up. And then they punch it in for the touchdown. Dwight Macon breaks the big red out of the huddle. I beg your pardon, Macon is not in the game right now. Instead, it's Anthony Pirro who is at quarterback. Macon's on the sideline, and a fumble. The ball is loose, and it looked like Steubenville came up with it. Macon is taking snaps on the sideline. I don't know if something happened to his hand while he was playing defense. Meanwhile, Steubenville just avoided disaster right there on the center exchange. Well, there's no question. I mean, as a backup quarterback, and especially with Anthony Macon ahead of you, you're not expecting too many snaps. And I'm sure this week in preparation, you know, Anthony Piero did not get too many. So it showed on the first one. Luckily for him in Steubenville, he jumped right on it. So again, Piero at the quarterback spot. Hands it off to Bronco Busick. He's out to the 26-yard line. He had to bring up third down at about five. Yeah, you made a good point. There's a lot of guys going both ways that typically throughout this season have not, and it, 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 and it has to be because of this game and obviously trying to take home that hardware and, and win this championship. So Bronco Busick, who normally doesn't start an offense, has, has gotten a few carries. Third down and five. Hero working out of the shotgun. He's going to keep it. And he's got a first down out across the 30-yard line. Moves out to the 30-yard line. First down, Big Red. Matt, Anthony Piero is a sophomore. Coming in right now in the state championship game, 5'10", 150-pound sophomore, picks up a first down after a fumble snap. That's composure for, for a young player. Well, you could say that football's in his blood. His dad is a member of the Big Red coaching staff, so it's not that you're ever truly prepared to jump into a state championship game as a sophomore, but as I said, he's, he's a coach's son, so he's ready for the moment. First down carry to Demetrius Brandon. And he's brought down defensively by Chris Bockrath of the Alter Knights. And there's no question now with Anthony Piero and there, it changed your offense a little bit. Different dynamic, 
you know, we, we don't know exactly what he can do as a quarterback, especially to the likes of trying to replace the you know, Division IV Player of the Year on, on offense. So, you know, that's something that, that not only Steubenville is going to adjust, but, uh, adjust to, but Alter is going to have to do the same. Reno Sukkosh, the all-time winningest coach in Big Red history. Piero out of the shotgun. Swings it out. Nowhere to go. Trying to cut it up. And Mike Goodwood is heading into the backfield. Let's go down for an update. Here's Katie with him. Yeah, guys, I had a chance to stand over next to Dwight Makeham when he was on the sideline here, and they were taping up the two middle fingers on his left hand. It looked like he might have stubbed them when he made that one tackle. Nothing serious. He is back out there, and I don't expect to see any problems from it, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Katie. Unfortunately, he comes on the field in a third and nine situation. He's got four receivers at Bronco Busick in the backfield. He's going up, he cuts it, he'll take it. Look out, 40, 50, out of bounds at the 44 yard line. Matt, he is a difference maker right there. He comes in on, on third and nine and, and makes something happen. Looking downfield, looking downfield, trying to make a play and does it with his legs. The key to that was that his eyes were downfield, trying to find a receiver when there's no one there, made a great decision, got downfield, got the first down and got out of bounds. A gain of 26. I thought he was gonna chuck it deep because he had a man breaking open, but I think he made the wise decision because anytime you can go for 26, this time the going is a little tougher. He picks up two. And not knowing what the injury is, Katie said it's on his left hand. That may not affect his throwing so much. And now if it's on his right hand or his throwing hand, you may, you may be in a little bit of trouble, but um, he should be fine throwing the ball. Already here today in the first quarter, we've seen both quarterbacks tuck it and provide the biggest plays of the game respectively. Bronco Busick trying to push the pile. He's forward for a couple. Matt Bronco Busick was one of the one of the only guys, actually the only guy from Steubenville to be a starter and play in that 2006 championship game. On the other side of the ball, it was Evan Neff, the center for, for Alter, the only guy to play in that game. So the rest of these guys were guys watching either in the stands or from the sidelines. Third down and six. Dwight Macon getting the play from the sideline. Busick shifting over to the right. Now the tight end slides in motion. Here's Busick inside, handoff. He's down in the 34 yard line. He'll be short of the first. Yeah, he's gonna be a little bit short, but there's no question they're going for it. Now this may be the final play of the fourth of the uh, first quarter. The, they don't have to run a play if they don't want to. They can let the uh, clock run out. But we'll see what Bacon decides to do. Fourth and three. They have to get across the 32-yard line and Bacon will let the clock run out and they'll have a fourth down play when we start the second quarter of action here at Fawcett Stadium in Kent where after one quarter of play, the Alter Knights lead the Steubenville Big Red seven to nothing. as we start the second quarter of play here in Ken. Hey, if you want to watch this game again, look for this game and other high school state championship games only on Time Warner Cable Local On Demand. You can pause, fast forward, rewind, even do instant replays. Local On Demand free with Time Warner Digital Cable. Fourth and three to start the second quarter for Steubenville. Bronco Music on the keeper, lunging forward. I don't think he got there. And the alternates have held. Wow. Defensively, they sh right there. That's a huge play showing up on fourth down. Steubenville just tried to turn around, give it to their big back, and came up just a tad short. So the Alter Knights will take over first down at their own 33-yard line. Scott Anderson, number 56, a six-foot, 200-pound senior defensive tackle, trying to bust up that play. And so now Austin Boucher and the Alter Knights. Back to work offensively. Boucher had a 50-yard gallop in the first quarter that helped set up their first touchdown here today. 
They'll go wishbone formation. Playcock down to one second and they call timeout. They were a little late getting out of the huddle. Actually, I think what happened, Matt, it looked like they were a little late getting the play from the side. Guys, and it just put it behind. Timeout, Kettering over. Their first charge timeout of the half. Yeah, and made a right decision right there. You call timeout. You got three of them. You're in the second quarter. You don't want to go five yards back. You make a good decision. Call timeout. Now get the play you want and get everybody lined up the right way. All right, let's go down for one of our Farmers Insurance sideline reports right now with Katie Witham. Thanks, Matt. I'm here with Farmers Insurance agent Robin William. Robin, you guys have really been an integral part with the OHSAA and STO just the last couple of years, but your reach goes a little further. You're definitely involved with Ohio high school sports here, but not many people probably realize that the reach goes further than just the Buckeye State. Can you tell me more about that? And actually, we have been involved with the Ohio High School Athletic Association now for the last two years. And um, Farmers has, plays an integral part in the community in which we are um, involved with. We, uh, we are currently, we are currently uh, uh, involved with in 16 of the 29 core states. Um, and we are just committed to being involved with our communities and uh, supporting, uh, again, the high school athletics with over 330 student athletes and 840 of the core schools here in Ohio. So. Thank you, Robin, so much for your partnership and your support here today. Okay, if you'd like more information, please contact your local agent or district managers for more information on our programs that we offer. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Guys? All right, thanks, Katie. Second down at five for the Alter Knights. Austin Boucher working under center. Justin Hall, the lone setback, now Borland in motion. Keeper, nowhere to go. Oh, he was hit immediately. And a good stop defensively for Steubenville. Looked like Shaquille Petaway from his outside linebacker spot got in there and blew up that play. Yeah, and Shaquille Petaway has had an unbelievable season. Just a sophomore, six foot, 170 pounds, 97 tackles, 17 tackles for loss. And this is a guy that's young but playing big. Reno Sukkosh said we had a lot of sophomores starting this year, but he said I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't want them to think they were that young. And now 14 games into the season, he says they're no longer sophomores. Boucher to throw. All kinds of time. Room to run. Finds an open man. It's Hall. And a first down at the 43 of Steubenville. Justin Hall, the fullback out of the backfield, made a nice catch. It looked like he adjusted his route, found some open room to operate. Yeah, and that's a nice job by, by him adjusting because there was no one open initially. And Boucher with so much time, great protection, just staying in that pocket, surveying the field, using his vision. I'll tell you what, he never panicked. He kept calm feet and threw a nice ball there to pick up the first down. At the 43 of Steubenville, clock moving, 10.24 to go, first half. Movement, and this is gonna back up the Knights five yards. Right on the play. Yeah, we talked about this offensive line. Full start, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Anchored by that, that center, uh, Evan Neff, senior, but across the board, they've got some big guys and, and some strong guys that control that line of scrimmage. Max Plunkett, the left tackle, is 6'8", 310 pounds. <laughs> that's, that's enormous. But as you mentioned, Neff, the center, is going to Ball State. So they definitely have some size up front. First and 15 after the penalty. Bell has a big hole, and he's got close to a first down, a gain of 12, maybe 13. Yeah, and it's just those holes. Those big linemen get on you, and they create a hole. And if you have running backs that the altar has, it's just you're, you're at the second level before you even know it. We're talking about three guys, including Boucher, that are averaging over seven yards a carry. I mean, that's, just, that's a stat that, that, is, that is hard to even fathom. Second down and two. They need to get inside the 33-yard line. Boucher hands the hall. He's got a first down. That's the ability Alter has. They, they can just grind you out. They can pick up big chunks, or they can get you three and four at a time and, and create a, a long drive and eat up time on that clock. The Alter Knights from Kettering, Ohio, down in Montgomery County. They're in the Greater Catholic Conference. School of 246 boys. Told you they had two forfeits earlier. Otherwise, they would be undefeated. They, they used an ineligible player inadvertently in the first two games. 
So they were forced to forfeit those. Otherwise, you'd be looking at two 14-0 teams here today. But they're looking for their first ever state championship, and they lead it seven to nothing. Boucher on the keeper is taken down, and Shaquille Petaway was in there on the stop. Tell you what, Matt, if Petaway doesn't get him, Boucher has that corner. He might be going up the sideline for a big gainer. And again, you talked about 17 tackles for a loss. He just got another one. Yeah, it is so impressive that, you know, like you said before, uh, Steubenville starting seven sophomores on defense, only two returning uh, starters from last year. And, and they just, get, you gotta grow up quick. That's just the, the tradition of Steubenville football and how good they are. Second down and 12. Boucher, look out, once he gets away. Throws it downfield and it is incomplete. He short hopped Cummins. Connor Cummins did a nice job coming back to the ball, but he just couldn't quite get enough on it because the blitz was in his face. Yeah, that's tough to throw off your back foot, especially a lefty going to your right right there. Petaway coming up the middle. And Boucher does a good job avoiding him, but there's another guy coming after him and, and, and another one after him. So you, you, know, you gotta get rid of that football. And he did a, a great effort, just a little short. Brings up third down and a dozen for the Alter Knights. Cummins on the far side, Danny Jasper, their leading receiver is flanked to the near side. Boucher, here comes the rush and he throws it away. Good pressure brought by Devon Campbell, the defensive tackle for Steubenville who came in with three sacks, nearly had a fourth. Yeah, now, you know, right here in these last few plays, Steubenville is putting a little bit of pressure on, uh, on Alter with the blitz and with those guys up front. Just doing a great job getting pressure. So, Steubenville will force a fourth down situation. And Borland on to put it away. Dwight Macon, the big red quarterback, is back to return if it's short enough. You would imagine he'll boot it right into the end zone. Angling it towards the sideline and a great job. It goes out at the nine yard line. Excellent job by Borland, almost like a lob wedge. Yeah. And unfortunately, not one that I've ever hit, but uh, <laughs> but no, that's, you know, he, just an unbelievable athlete. We talked about him. He's going to Wisconsin uh, to play running back there and, and does, you know, can play special teams and help his team win. And to just pooch one right there, we saw him warming up, and I saw him warming up punting. I'm thinking, who is this monster punting the ball? And it's, you know, it's their, one of their best players in Chris Borland. It may sound trite, but what you have in, in this game here today is a lot of football players. Yes. Guys who could play quarterback, defense, wide receiver, it doesn't matter. You got a lot of good football players on the field here today. First and 10 for their own nine. Macon wants to throw. Look out, heavy rush. A little high on the toss. On the far side, he was looking for number 15, David Anderson, but a little tall. Tell you what, Matt, that was a close one right there. And, and you know, as a quarterback, you know, your heels are on the goal line. You look like, you know, a safety potentially. And you're very elusive, avoiding, avoiding the rush, and, and does the smart thing and just throw that football away. Second down and 10. 8.03 to go first half. <laughs> Only one receiver. Anderson to the near side going in motion. Keep it, make it to the 15, to the 18, and down, close to a first down, it'll be about a yard shy. Well, Dwight Macon, we told you earlier, was the co-offensive player of the year in Division IV, which got him first team All-State honors, along with his teammate Bronco Busick. And for the Alter Knights, Boucher, Borland, and their big physical center, Evan Neff. Of course, Macon and Busa, Boucher, Boucher, excuse me, were co-players of the year offensively and music was the defensive player of the year so great players on the field in division four that's music trying to pound his way forward for the first down the spot would tell you that he has got the first down out to the 20 yard line and this is the second time they're in a, in, in a third and short and the way that you talked about there's football players in the field and there's tough players too it's, these guys want to be out there and they want to get those first downs and take those hits and right there getting that first down and a big one, something that Steubenville definitely needed. Reno Sukosh was named the coach of the year in Division Four, and when we told him about that, talked to him about that earlier today, he said, I don't care about that, I want to be the team of the year after today. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty good quote, I like that, I liked when he, when he said that. 
Dwight Macon looking to the sideline to get the play. Play clock down to three seconds. Just did get it off. Macon looking to throw, now runs. Gets outside and gets a first down. How about that Houdini act? I'll tell you what, we were, we were looking at the stats, 30 to 70 uh, pass to run, and, and Coach Sakach was thinking, wait a second, I think we're a little more balanced than that. Well, the reason is you call passes, and then you got a quarterback like this that can just make plays when there's nothing there, get downfield, make people miss, and just pick up chunks of yards after chunks of yards. That was straight backyard football at its <laughs> best right there. He took an absolute zero of a play and almost turned it into a first down, second and inches. Brandon flanked to the right of Bacon in the backfield. The keeper, and he goes forward for a first down out to the 31-yard line. Yeah, I like the term backyard football, especially with the turkey bowl yesterday <laughs> there most families participated in. And, and those are the type of players you want on your team, guys that understand football and, and what's, what's going on and, and the situations. And there's no question Dwight Macon is one of those guys, just understands how to make plays. And I think as he continues to mature, He's going to start seeing more of the field down the field, yeah. and then he'll be an absolute terror for defenses. Yeah, only a junior. Unbelievable. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Steubenville trailing at seven to nothing. And on a first down carry, this is Demetrius Brandon out to the 35-yard line. You now, Demetrius Brandon, their main ball carrier, over 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns, averaging 7.2 yards a carry, almost 100 yards a game. It's kind of in the background. He's one of those guys you don't really hear about, and he's had an unbelievable season. When you got guys like Dwight Macon, and then you have Bronco Busey who comes in, you know, that's the kind of guy you don't hear about, but certainly does a lot of damage. Big Red shifting around offensively on a second down and seven play. Westlake, the motion man. Macon going downfield. He's got his tight end. his second circus catch of the day. Wow. All the way down to the 40 yard line. And Danny Bain getting used today. Definitely two big catches for his team. You know, you, you lay in bed the night before and you're thinking, you know, <laughs> what's gonna happen? I hope I get a couple chances. And Danny Bain's had two big catches for the Steubenville Big Red team. A gain of 25 yards for the junior tight end. And offensively now, Big Red starting to click a little bit. like Borland from his linebacker spot was able to get some pressure and spike it to the turf. Yeah, Borland made a nice play. You know, we don't, Kettering Alter's defense doesn't really get much press because of how high power their offense is, but I was looking at one of the stats in the defense. This year in 14 games, they only gave up 1,061 rushing yards. To me, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. So, you know, you hear about the offense because they're, you know, it's kind of sexy, but this defense is very strong. And they're out, handoff. Mike Goodwin gets turned back inside and nowhere to run, a loss of two. And there they are, they're just swarming around. Talked to Coach Dom Sites and he just wants guys that are gonna fly around and play hard today. And at the end of the day, he just wanted to lift up that trophy. That's all he was talking about. And also, some good fundamental discipline for guys to stay at home right there. Yes. Now a third at 12 situation for the Big Red. They'll deploy three receivers and two tight ends. Empty backfield. Bacon guns it incomplete. Bacon's pass incomplete. So fourth down fourth coming down. up. And, and Reno Sakash a decision to go or punt here, and he'll kick it away. And Alter's given uh, Steubenville a little, some fits on the outside. They're playing straight man out there, and, and they're covering those receivers well. And every time Macon turns around, there's a, there's a defender right on his receiver's back. If it was fourth and five or less, I'd say he goes for it here, but there aren't a whole lot of plays in the, in the playbook for fourth and 12. <laughs> Anthony Pirro to punt it away. Left-footed boot. 
inside the 10. It hits at the two and into the end zone for a touchback. We've got a timeout here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton. 4.33 left to go in the half, and the alternates lead the Steubenville Big Red 7 to nothing. Alter leads seven to nothing. Get in the game during the state football championships by watching live streaming video complete with in-game stats, real-time chats, photos, and more. OhioHighSchoolSports.com, where high school sports play. Austin Boucher leads the Alter offense out of the huddle at their own 20-yard line. Wishbone formation, and he'll give it to Borland. He gets away from his first tackler and leans forward for a gain of about three. At times that wishbone is, is set up for the triple option and other times it's, it's, it's set up for two guys to block and give it to your best runner there, Chris Borland, to try to find a hole and, and get those big legs driving to get a couple yards. By the way, that, that drive that Steubenville had started at their own nine yard line. They went 59 yards in 11 plays, ate up seven minutes and 24 seconds but wound up with no points. Second and six. Boucher gives it. No, he keeps it. And he runs forward for a gain of about three more. It'll bring up third and short. Now, one thing about that option, it, it's hard to defend and it's hard to prepare for. In a week, it's really hard to simulate that. Yeah, right here. Right. Now, Boucher does a good job pulling it out, reading it well, and getting upfield. But as, as a defensive player, it is really hard to prepare for that. Boucher on a third and short situation. They need four for the first down. Clock moving, three minutes, ten seconds to go. Boucher going to throw. He's going down. He is set. And a flag comes in. It looks like a face mask. John Elder had him, and he was going down, but it looked like he was just reaching for something to hold on to. It may have got the face mask. Yeah, Elder got in there quickly. He made a nice move at the line of scrimmage. It was right in Austin Boucher's lap, but Boucher ducked down, and it was kind of one of those where the hand was going up to make the tackle, and he grabbed onto some face mask. Had a good call. You can see him get the face mask. An unfortunate mistake, though, for Steubenville because otherwise they'd have been looking at getting the ball back with plenty of time to operate here, trying to get a score at the end of the first half. Now, let's see after the... Oh, okay, it's not, uh, not the 15-yard not the penalty. So a five-yarder. So they've still got a chance here if they can stop it. Although the clock is moving under three minutes to go. Yeah, and with uh, Suba having three timeouts right here, you, you might want to call one and save yourself a little bit of time, but if not, you still got three if you get back on offense. So a third and seven from their own 23. Norland in motion. Boucher keeps it, first down. And then the ball popped loose. And he fumbled it. But it goes out of bounds. And the Alter Knights maintain possession. And a first down carry. That's a big third down conversion right there because if you give Student Ball the ball back with you know, two and a half minutes. Well, luckily for Alter, that ball goes out of bounds. In fact, Chris Bullen does a smart thing and swats at it and knocks it out of bounds. Like Jordan Meyer was the man who knocked it loose. So a first and ten. Boucher over the middle, behind his receiver, but Borland makes the catch and another great spin move. A gain of close to nine yards. You always wonder, like, why do these guys get D Division I scholarships and what do they look like and how do they play? And this is how, right there. We're talking about a fullback who makes a catch as he's running one way, reaches back with one arm, not only makes the catch, but also avoids a tackler and makes a spin. And, and that's a Division I athlete right there. Music was a little slow to get up for Steubenville. He's the middle linebacker defensively. Second and one. And that time, Portland had nowhere to go. 
I think they stopped him short. It'll bring up third and inches. Well, just short as that clock ticks down. You wonder who might use a timeout in this situation. Well, third down, less than a yard, and Domside's taking his time. He's got the seven to nothing lead. If they get the first down, then he may go for broke. Yeah. Justin Hall, the fullback in that wishbone, and now Borland in motion. The keeper, Boucher, didn't get it. It's gonna, it's gonna depend on the spot after he leaned forward. Initially, the initial surge looked like they pushed him back. And where they spot the football, he looks like he's got the first down. Yeah, it looks like he has the first down, but in the process of getting that first down, a lot of time ran off that clock, and, and you wonder if they're gonna get in some kind of hurry up offense and, and see if they can't put something together because that clock is ticking, it's ticking fast. He literally just fell backwards into a first down right there. So a minute to go, clock moving. Boucher guns it to Teddy Jasper. He's up to the 50-yard line. Tackled on the play by Jordan Meyer. And now the Knights go to hurry up mode with the clock running at 45 seconds to go. And Boucher looks comfortable throwing that football and running that football. He, he's certainly the complete package. He's got time. It's Jasper, 35, 30. Ball pops loose, Big Red has it. Now it was Dwight Macon who caused that fumble too. Did not give up on that play. Well, I don't know that Steubenville will make anything out of this, but he may have just saved them some points for sure. Oh, absolutely. What a catch by Jasper and a great move. But there's Macon not giving up and getting that ball out. What a play by Macon. Shaquille Petaway came up with the loose pigskin for Steubenville. But you're right, it was Macon who got his hand in there and ripped the ball out. So now Dwight Macon on a first and 10 play from his own 23 yard line, 25 seconds left first half. He's gonna check it, downfield incomplete. Boy, he had Anthony Piero wide open on the near side, but he was rolling away from the play and just didn't see him. Yeah, that would, that would have been a really tough throw, but if he saw him, he may have been able to throw one up. That's how wide open he was, but you think about momentum, and although Steubenville did not score, any, or so far has not scored any points this half, the biggest play they had was that fumble right there, and that's something that you know, I'm sure Coach Sokach takes into the halftime. You're thinking, we're making plays, now we just gotta get some points. 20 seconds to go, second down and two. Again, Bacon rolling. He's got all kinds of time. Throws it back across the field, good one. At the 40, still on his feet to the 44 yard line. Clock stop, only seven seconds left. Let's see if they burn a timeout and go for a Hail Mary or some type of a maybe gimmick play here to end the half. They do take a timeout. Macon has the arm to make the throw. Now, I don't know from here, that's, that's a pretty long throw, but there's enough time they can maybe get a quick one, get out of bounds, maybe get five to 10 yards. They have two more timeouts left, so it could be something even over the middle if they had to, and then maybe throw one up. These are those situations where you're, as a defensive player, you work on this stuff at the end of practice, maybe once, maybe twice a week at most, yeah. where you just, Play center field and try to knock everything down. You don't go for the glory of the interception. You just make sure you knock it down or at least tackle the receiver. Yeah, no one behind you at all. And, and don't get greedy, as you said. Knock the football down. Don't go for the glory uh, and, and make the play. But, you know, you watch enough football, and Matt, I know you've seen it. Crazy things happen. You throw one up, and it gets tipped around, and all of a sudden, little one play like that can, can change the whole outcome of a game. Or well, we've also seen a, a situation where you, you throw a ball downfield, and then you get a lateral, and if the defense over pursues, yeah. all of a sudden you got daylight and a big play. So we'll see what happens here. Chris Borland is playing center field. He's 30 yards off the ball for the alternates. 
Bacon with seven seconds left. Three-man rush, just gonna go deep. He's actually got a man open, and then this is gonna be pass interference. He pushed him out of bounds. But I'll tell you what, if you're alter, it's maybe not a bad play. If you feel like you're beat, you can't let him catch it and go for an uncontested touchdown. But by pushing him out of bounds, you're going to give him one more play. No, I agree with you. Absolutely. You got. If you think you're beat, you got to make a play. It's not going to kill you to, to get a flag, but it's going to kill you if you give up points. But there is no time on the clock, so that means one on time down here for Steubenville. And they, all, they have a decision to make depending on where this ball is. 15-yard penalty, I think. They were at the 45, I believe, 44. So now, they've, now he's got a legitimate shot to throw on to get it close to the goal line, perhaps. That was Trey Wiggins who could really fly at the wide receiver spot, and he got behind Matt Perello. Even in that situation where your number one responsibility as a DB is just stay back, don't let anybody get behind you. Yeah, and as a coach, you're always thinking, you know, how many times did I tell him that? And, and you know, you put the, the, the player, you still get a little eager and you want to make a play and you jump up there and all of a sudden you got a guy running behind you and all you can remember the coach saying is don't let anybody get behind you. And so, like you said, did the right thing, pushed the guy out of bounds and, and made sure he did not make a catch. And Dom Sites, 226 career wins under his belt. His team leads seven to nothing. This will be the final play of the first half, barring a penalty. Macon from his own, or from the uh, Alter 41-yard line. Three-man rush for Alter. Bacon running out of time and room. Great block. Still on his feet. Everybody, it's you talk about backyard football. Bacon finally lets it go, and it's going to be intercepted. <laughs> and a fumble, and Big Red may have recovered it, but it doesn't matter. The half ends on a wild play. Kettering Alter will take a 7 to nothing lead into the locker room here at halftime. But this game far from over. Both teams had some big plays. Alter capitalized on their one big play, got the touchdown. Steubenville had some big plays just unable to mount any momentum to get it into the end zone. Let's go down onto the field. Katie Witham is standing by with Ed Dom Sites. Coach, you head into the locker room on top, 7 nothing. What was the key offensively for you guys in the first half? Uh, I'm not probably making up a, making a couple of uh, big first downs as we came down the field here. Uh, what we've got to do is we've got, to, we've got to run the ball a little bit better than we have. We're not picking up much yardage. Uh, I think that uh, I'm pleased with our passing game so far. It's just uh, we, we, we've, we've got to pick up some yards on the ground, try and keep the ball. You can't plan to tell any guys anything specific in the locker room or make any adjustments here coming right, in? Yeah, I, I think you got to make some adjustments. There are some things we want to, we want to do uh, that we haven't had an opp opportunity yet. It's not so much a matter of keeping it for the second half, but it is, uh, it's just we haven't had the opportunity to run them yet. So, uh, yeah, we're going to we'll, – We'll, we'll do some things a little bit differently the second half. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Guys, let's send it back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Katie. So a wild first half. Even though not a lot on the scoreboard, there has been a lot of action in that final play where Dwight Macon went sideline to sideline, I think two or three times, <laughs> before he finally uncorked the pass. The butter was picked off. And that's the way the first half ends with the Kettering Alter Knights leading the Steubenville Big Red. Seven to nothing. Stick around. Mark Schwab and Jim Isabella have the Farmers Insurance halftime report coming up from the studio here at Boston Stadium. We're at halftime. Seven to nothing. Alter leads Big Red. For the Division Four game. Well, I'll tell you, uh, this is something you know one of the teams has to work on or something has to fix. Alter has a few more rushing yards than Steubenville, but I mean, all in all, it's been a fairly evenly played first half. I think for Steubenville, though, offensively, they haven't been able to get enough consistency to put points on the board, and that's the bottom line. Yeah, no rhythm for Steubenville. They've just kind of been hit or miss, a couple good plays, and then a few bad ones to follow. And uh, and you got to credit Alter's defense. They've only given up nine points a year or a game this year, and and they they came to play today. Well, the Steubenville Big Red trying to win their third state championship in the last four years, but they're trailing 7 to nothing at halftime, and their head coach, Reno Sukosh, none too happy about it. Stick around. The exciting second half is coming up next.
back here at Fawcett Stadium where the Archbishop alternates from Kettering leads Steubenville Big Red seven to nothing. Both teams out here getting ready for the second half. There's Reno Sukkosh in his 26th year at the helm in Steubenville, the winningest coach in Big Red history, three-time state champion. They're in Jefferson County. They are right on the Ohio River. When you cross the, the bridge over the Ohio River and you are in Weirton, West Virginia. They were 10-0 in the regular season. The last time they lost a regular season game was 2002. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> playoff <laughs> wins over Cardinal Moody, whom they had never beaten before. They had lost every matchup against Moody in the playoffs prior to that. And Reno Sukai said that was a big win for us and for our program to get over that hump to finally beat Youngstown Cardinal Moody and move on. But now they have run into a very tough matchup in this state championship game, Kettering Alter. Leading Big Red by a score of seven to nothing. Ed Domsites, the head coach at Kettering Alter, has to feel pretty good about what his team was able to do in the first half. They offensively were able to get everybody into the flow. Boucher, the quarterback, they were able to get Borland more involved in the passing game than the running game. But also, Justin All had some big carries. So offensively, while they only have seven points, they were able to do a number of different things. And now Steubenville will receive the football to start the second half. Danny Jasper, who kicked one into the end zone for a touchback earlier here this afternoon, will kick it away. Jesse Bearden and Trey Wiggins back to return for the Big Red. Jasper, this one not as deep. Bearden. Over the 15, gets outside, still on his feet, trying to cut back. Stays alive. And out to about the 23-yard line where Steubenville puts it in play, first and 10. So a nice return for the 5'11 sophomore, Jesse Burton. Excuse me, yeah. There's been a lot of cutting back from these Steubenville players. I mean, you talk about football players, you're just trying to find a seam and, <laughs> and anything you can. And, and to start the second half, you got Jesse Bearden making a big play, bringing the ball out here and you know, getting something making something out of nothing. Now, Steubenville had a drive in the second quarter that started at their own nine-yard line, and, and they went 59 yards, took up a lot of time, but they didn't get any points out of that. So maybe that was a, a drive where they found some things offensively that worked, and we'll see if they can capitalize now in the third quarter. Looking for Sage Kutry, he's got him, and it is caught over the 30 to the 31-yard line, or was that Danny Bain again? It was Danny Bain. Now, Sage Kutry is the other tight end who leads the team in receptions. But he has been held without a catch here so far today, and Danny Bain is catching everything in sight, isn't he? Yeah, they're, they're using him well. In fact, uh, just a junior, Danny Bain, but the thing about him is he's got three catches for 59 yards today, and, and he's doing a great job getting over the middle and finding space. And they've been some tough catches, you're right. Second down and two. Dwight making out of the shotgun. They'll keep it coming near side. Gets outside. And he's out to about the 34-yard line. Very close to a first down. Matt, the one thing Alter's defense is doing is they're playing a lot of man on the outside. They're, they're challenging Dwight Macon to make throws. And when you play man on the outside, you can bring people into the box. You can stop that run, especially inside. And so what, the, what Steubenville may have to do with some adjustments is take some shots on the outside and throw a couple routes when you got one-on-one man-to-man -on -man coverage. And Bacon has thrown over 200 passes this year, so it's not like he hasn't been tested or hasn't had to throw the ball. First and 10. Anderson is the motion there. Bacon has it knocked away. Good defensive play made by number two, Matt Pirello. Looks like he was going to that tight end, Danny Bain, once again. Yeah, and Macon was under a lot of pressure there in the pocket, maybe moving around a little bit more than he had to, but you know, getting hit as you throw, that's a, that's a tough proposition to make a good throw when, when a guy's helmet's in your ribs. Second down and 10. Just underway, third quarter. Cloud cover that was here earlier is gone. Sun was actually peeking out here. At the, oh, a big hit, and down goes Brandon. Big hit by Philip Sauer, his defensive end spot. He came crashing down the line of scrimmage and nailed Brendan for a loss on the play. And that is a hit right there. 
Sauer with a huge hit, tackle for loss, and that's just a thank you very much. We talked about how these guys are physical and playing good football. That's, that's a perfect example right there. Third at 12 for Steubenville. They need to get past the 44-yard line for a first down. Empty backfield. Five receivers for Bacon. And he ran out of time. That'll be a delay of game penalty. It'll back him up five more. He had plenty of time to get the play off. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Our referee today is John Evans from Maslin. That may have a few people from Steubenville raising their eyebrows because at one time, Steubenville, Maslin, Canton McKinley, Warren Hardy, Alliance, and Niles McKinley played in the All-American Conference. And it was a war just to get through your conference schedule. Make it. Throws it deep downfield. He was looking for Piero and overshot him at the 45-yard line. Yeah, just a little bit too much. In fact, he had a couple guys maybe had a step uh, on their defenders, and, and there's no question Piero had, had leverage, inside leverage on his defender. If the ball's there, he might have a shot, but Macon just let this one fly and and then a little bit too much. Well, you can see with his arm, though, oh, he, he can, can let it fly. Fourth down, Steubenville will punt it away. Anthony Pirro stands at his own 13-yard line. Low snap. Boots it away, and he's hoping for a good roll. And it will go out at the 42-yard line where the alternates will put it in play. First and 10. Glad you're with us here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton, Ohio for the Division IV state championship game between the alternates and the Steubenville Big Red. I'm Matt Underwood alongside Matt Durazio. Matt was the quarterback for the Philadelphia Soul, right? The yes. arena champions this year. Get a big ring for that? Not yet. It's, it's, it's coming. Okay. <laughs> Got to come back and show us. Definitely. Wishbone formation to start for the Alphabets here. Their first possession of the third quarter. Boucher keeps it, spins away. Still on his feet after the 50 and down to the 49-yard line of Big Red. A gain of nine. Great individual effort by Boucher right here. Just making something happen. A spin move and, and getting upfield and, and just, just has a nice presence about him where he doesn't seem to be panicked. He seems real comfortable and, and he's, he's made play after play all day today. It was a good read because he's, he faked to the fullback. Bronco Busick blew up the fullback. Boucher hands it off. This is Cody Talby, his first carry of the day. And it looks like he has a first down down to the Steubenville 48 yard line. Yeah, and Cody Tolby's had a great year himself. He's averaging 7.7 uh, .7 yards a carry, nine touchdowns, and, and over 500 yards. And he's, he's the fourth option, basically, in this offense as far as running the ball. And in fact, before the game, Coach Sakach was worried about him. He saw him warm and said, that kid looks great over there. we got to tackle him, too. And so it just goes to show you, Alter's got players all over the field. I remember back in high school, and, and the coaches said, if, if you can average four yards a carry offensively, we're going to make a lot of first downs. Right. These guys obliterate that field. It's unbelievable. First and ten now for Alter. This is the give to the fullback. And Justin Hall picks up maybe a couple. You know, at times I'm thinking Alter's really controlled this football game, no question. And, and even physically, they've almost kind of had, had control of it. But you look up at the scoreboard, it's still only 7-0, and there's a lot of football to be played. And, and Steubenville defensively, even although they give a play or a first down here and there, they, they continue to make plays, and, and they don't break. Well, they continue to run this wishbone attack very effectively. Boucher pitches it. Here's Boone. Room to run. 35-30. And tackled down at the 32-yard line. Finally brought down on the play by Jesse Bearden. That's the first time today they've gotten to that third phase of that option. They've been they've been a lot of gives and a lot of keeps that quarterback, but Boucher does a good job getting to that third option, making a nice pitch, and, and you get uh, someone like Borland on the edge with his skills. You know He's definitely going to pick up some big yards for you. Let's go down to Katie Witham on the sideline for a Farmers Insurance Report. 
Well, you guys have been yelling out Chris Borland's number a lot here today, guys. You know, when I spoke with Ed Domsight before today's game, he said that this kid does amazing things with the football. He makes big plays out of nothing. You know, there are times when it looks like he's going to get no gain, and he gets 10 yards. And when you watch him run, guys, he's having fun, and he's having fun here today. No question about that. Cody Talby had the carry that time for very, a very short gain, if he got anything at all. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it. Not a loss of ground. But Chris Borland, who we told you in the open, is committed to the University of Wisconsin for college football. Over eight yards of carry, 18 touchdowns, but I've been very impressed with his pass catching ability here today as well. Hits out, Toby, trying to get the corner. 25-20, and he's got a first down. Again, they get to that third option on the attack, and it works for big yardage. Yeah, getting to the perimeter, using the whole field with this offense, and I know we've been talking a lot about Chris Borland and everything he's done. I know he didn't carry the ball there, but he made a key block for Cody Talby right there. And Talby's somehow in this half is all of a sudden becoming a factor. We didn't see him. I don't think he got one carry in the first half, and now he's a the guy they're going to go to, and he's had a couple big runs. They were keeping him fresh. Yeah. Saving him for the second half. What a luxury. Apparently they said he stepped out, Matt, uh, before he got to the uh, 17 yard line, so it brings up third and inches. The pitch out. Bowling 15 to the 10 and down with the night fumble. Macon has it, but the referee said his knee was down when the ball came out. I'll tell you what, by Borland's reaction, he thought he fumbled it because when the ball came out, he was he was hustling back to get that ball, but the official was right there, and he made the call immediately. Well, let's take one more look at it. And a good call. I think once your elbow's down, you're yep. down. It's a, right, an elbow equals a knee, as they say? Yeah, the ground can't cause a fumble, and, and uh, that was a good call right there by the official. So it'll be first and goal to go for the Alter Knights just inside the 10-yard line. Boucher keeps it, and he gets a couple. Down close to the eight. And although he only got a couple there, he's got a big frame, 6'2", 205, and he kind of dragged a defender there, even though it was only a yard or two. This is the type of guy that's not going to you know, get tackled for a loss. If he's got a chance, he's going to fall forward and keep those legs driving with that, with that big 6'2", 203-pound frame. Right now, if I'm a stupid little defensive back, you only, not only do you have to be worried about run support, but you've got to be worried about a, a play action fake and then finding the guy wide open in the end zone here. Second down and eight. Boucher pitches wide. Tolby down to the five and stuck there. Ball came out, but again, they say he was down on the play. You know, that interest, interesting stat coming into this game. Uh, Alter has fumbled the ball 22 times, but only lost at six. And I know with the option, you have that, you have a, you know, there's a high percentage of maybe having a fumble, but even, even so, you got to care. That ball may even coming out. You got to take care of that football, no matter what it is. As a coach, you never want to see that ball around and leave it up to the officials to make a call. So far, the officials have called him down twice. I'll tell you what, they've both been close. Isaiah Willis putting the hit on. Third and goal for the Alter Knights. Wishbone formation. One receiver near side. Boucher keeps it. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Austin Boucher on the keeper. And Kettering Alter is out to a 13 to nothing lead. What a drive right there. That's just wearing the other team down. Just wearing them down with the running game. Pounding those big linemen on those defensive linemen and getting yard after yard. And and, and, and coming out, and the first drive of the second half for them is a big one. The extra point attempt by Danny Jasper is up and good. And it's a two touchdown lead for the Kettering Alter Knights. As Boucher rode the fullback and then pulled it out. Four forty to go, third quarter. Archbishop Alter with a fourteen to nothing lead over Steubenville. Alter getting set to kick it off, and the Big Red has to try to find something offensively that they can hang their hat on here. 
to try to get on the board and get back into the football game. Jasper will kick it off for Alter. Back deep to return for Steubenville. Number 21, Michael Goodwin, for number 22, Jesse Duke. with a good boot. And again, it's into the end zone for his second touchback of the afternoon. So we'll take it out to the 20-yard line where Steubenville puts it in play. And before that, let's go down onto the sidelines for a Farmers Insurance Report. Here's Katie with him. Thank you, Matt. I am here with the Assistant Commissioner of the OHSA, Steve Neal. Steve, one of your areas of responsibility is securing corporate partnerships. Can you tell me a little bit more about that program? Yes, we're very fortunate to have a, a pretty good partnership platform as well as a marketing platform by which we're able to get opportunities for companies to really uh, do outreach and education programs uh, with all the student athletes across the state of Ohio. And uh, We have over 1,600 member schools that, uh, that we do programs with and a lot of the companies such as Farmers Insurance Ohio, just Sports Time and uh, Sports Time Ohio has really kind of gotten behind our co corporate partnership platform. Now, for all of those CEO CEOs that are out there watching, how can they get involved and work with the OHSA? Well, I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm the guy. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, we work very closely with Home Team Marketing out of the Cleveland area that does a great job in uh, creating educational programs that, uh, that really work well with uh, all the students and uh, the communities as well as uh, a lot of the corporate partners. Now, you also are kind of the commissioner for some of the sports. Can you tell me a little more about which sports you oversee? Yes, well, uh, although this is a football weekend, we just uh, capped off a great cross-country season and also uh, work with the sports of uh, track and field and then ice hockey. So uh, very, very diverse. However, we have over 24 member, uh, mem uh, 24 sports uh, over all of our sport programs. So we're, uh, we're pretty uh, pretty lucky to have such a great story tradition and history of sports uh, here at the Rachel Center. Thank you so much, Steve. Guys, let's send it back up to you. All right, thanks, Katie. Dwight Bacon on the keeper gets the penalty yardage back, and it will bring up second down and 10 for Steubenville. I mean, it's, not, it's certainly not time to panic. I mean, you're only down 14 points, and there's certainly a lot of time left, but you got to have that sense of urgency maybe. Maybe you go to a play or some kind of formation that, you know, you've been holding back a little bit if you're Coach Reno Sakaj, something to maybe catch this altered defense who has been unbelievable all game off guard and try to get, a, you know, maybe a big play go your way. Two tight end formation, making keeping it coming near side. Crosses the 20 out to about the 23, and it's going to be third and about six, maybe seven yards. And an interesting uh, third down conversion stat is you know, Kettering Alter is six of eight for 75%, and Steubenville is three for seven, 42%. And, and the reason why is because Steubenville has been in third and long almost all day, and that's a tough thing to do. You're, it's hard to pick those things up, as you say. You, can, you know, there's a few plays in the, in, in the playbook for third and nine, but there's not, you know, 10, 15 of them. They need to get across the 30-yard line for the first down here. Music shifting over to the right of Macon. Looking downfield and throws it out of bounds. And a penalty was thrown late. I think they had an ineligible man downfield. That looked like maybe it was supposed to be a screen play, but the timing was messed up. Yeah, the screen was set up. Alter read it. They were all over it, and, and uh, Lima were downfield, and, and there was just nothing you can do. The only thing that Dwight Macon can do is maybe take off and run. During the play, we had ineligibles downfield on the offense. A penalty will be declined. Fourth down. So a three and out for Steubenville and Anthony Pirro on the punt. Besides a few broken plays here and there, Alter has kind of been one step ahead of Steubenville defensively all day. They have right there, they, they no blitz. They kind of play a little soft coverage and, and read that screen perfectly. I can't afford to lose like this. Let's go. with a left-footed boot. Jasper at his 43-yard line trying to cut outside. A big hit made, but Sage Kutry brings him down. Caleb Westlake looked like maybe was the man who got peeled back on. All right, well, the last time Alter had the ball to open the third quarter, they went right down the field. 
Moreland had a big run. And then Cody Talby got into the act. He had a couple of big carries. But in the end, it was the quarterback, Austin Boucher, or the keeper, to give Alter a 14 0 lead. Again, the wishbone attack for the Knights. This is Boland to the 50 yard line. A gain of four, second down and six. You got to give credit to Coach, uh, Coach Domsites for his game plan. First half, a lot of passing. Maybe a little more than you probably typically see out of a, an altered team, and, 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 but still move the ball and, and got seven points. Coming in the second half, all of a sudden we're getting to the third phase of, the, of, the, of this, this option out of the bone, this wishbone, and they're just mixing it up well, and they just totally uh, kept Steubenville off guard. Second and six from the 50-yard line. And Boucher gives it to the fullback and hauls it inside the 40 down to the 48-yard line. Matt, these two backs right here, in fact, all three of them, Cody uh, Talby, Justin Hall, Chris Borland, we're talking 215, 220, 217, and a quarterback that's 203. These are four big guys that you're trying to tackle all day long. And that can wear on you. Not to mention, you got offensive linemen, you're talking 6'8", 310 pounds, 6'4", 240, they, they lean on you. It makes for a tough, long day if you're student there. comes Borland, tough sled in that time. This is very similar to their, their last drive. They got a couple chunks here, a couple chunks there, picking up those first downs, moving the chains, but the big part is eating up that clock. Second down and call it eight. Alter offensive line has done a terrific job here today, opening holes and pushing the pile forward. We give it to the fullback. And a short game will bring up third down. Now when I talk about simulating the, the wishbone look and then the option, it's tough because you're talking about a scout team that's trying to read off of a card and they really don't understand the concept of maybe of what, who I'm supposed to read and who I'm supposed to give it to. So you're not really throughout the week getting a true look so defensively, if you're Steubenville, you know, this is maybe a whole new thing, and then not to mention the quality of players that Alto has running it just makes it that much harder. Yeah, in this day and age, you just don't see it. But 35. Keeper Boucher flips it, Borland cutting it back. Spins away. Down to the 30, 29 yard line, very close to a first down. Boy, did he make something out of nothing right there. And that was what you've been saying all day, Matt. That's just football players. Boucher pitches it, probably doesn't need to. After he does pitch it, tries to get a block. Look, he's looking for somebody. But Borland cuts back, spins, and you know, do, been doing what he's been doing all day and makes a huge play. They mark him down at the 30. They have to get inside the 28 for a first. And that's going to bring to an end the third quarter of play here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton. One quarter of play left to decide the Division IV state champion. We'll be back with the conclusion next. Starting the fourth quarter here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton, Archbishop Kettering Alter leading Steubenville 14 to nothing. You're looking right there at Paul Dietzberger, who coached Ed Domsites when Ed Domsites was in high school back at Trotwood, Madison. Now he's watching his former pupil try to win his first state championship here today in Canton. Big play of the game right coming up. And penalty flags, it looked like Steubenville jumped. Man, oh man. They went with the hard count, and I think it worked. The referees convene. Ladies, ladies, yeah, you can't stand it. We have a dead ball foul. We have offsides on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. That will result in a first down. After three quarters, you can see now Alter is starting to open up a gap. They've outrushed him by 100 yards. And the time of possession is crucial too, especially coming down to this last quarter and the way that Alter does control the football. So that gives him a first down at the 25-yard line. Bumpo! Ball is loose. Who's got it? Steubenville says they have it. 
Alter says they've got it. And the officials concur. The Knights somehow got the loose pigskin back. Unbelievable. That ball was pinballing around. And you'll see right here, it looked like Boucher just had trouble with the snap. You know, you take a million of those throughout the season and lose concentration for one second and then the ball's on the turf. But fortunately for Alter, they get it back. I don't know how, but at the bottom of the pile, you never know what's going on down there. You talked about it earlier. They've had a lot of fumbles this year, but they don't lose many of them. Right. Only nine turnovers in offense this year, which is an unbelievable stat. Second down and 11. Boucher keeps it. And he's down to about the 20-yard line before he finally lost his footing. The thing about those plays, I like that. Boucher keeps, you know, puts his hand down, gets those extra yards, and all of a sudden, you're in a third and medium instead of a third and long, and, and the clock is still running, and, and you give yourself a chance to, you know, to convert on this, on this third down. Again, wishbone attack for the Alta Knights. Boucher. Fakes it, pitches out, look out, Bowling, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Knights. Holy smokes, he pitched it wide, and Bowlin hit the seam, and he was gone. That 21-yard touchdown there for Borland, and it, that play executed perfectly. Ran that triple option into the boundary, pulled it right away, Boucher did. Pitch it out to Borland with a blocker. He's got Talby right in front of him, and then you got Jasper downfield blocking his man into the end zone, and, and Chris Borland goes in untouched. Jasper to try the extra point attempt, it's up, and it is good. Kettering Alter with a 21 to nothing lead with 10.47 left to play in the game. And the folks who made the long drive from Kettering, Ohio, are loving it on the far sideline here today. And, and the, I think the difference today thus far in these 21 points on the board has just been how physical, oh, right there, how physical Ketter, Kettering has been. And, and that was Talby putting a block. And, Although he was the man that went down, all you got to do is get in the way. You know, once you give your guy a lane, it doesn't matter how it looks as long as you, it's effective. Pancake blocks look pretty. Yes. But you're right. At the end of the day, just get the job done. Well, hey, Tribe fans, 2009 opening series and six-pack tickets are now on sale at any of the six Indians team shops or online at Indians.com. And this weekend only, you can get a 50% off replica jersey with any purchase of 09 season tickets. Don't delay. Go to Indians.com or stop by any of the six Indians team shops today. Two Opening series tickets. Sorry about that, Matt. Two possessions for Alter this half in nine minutes and three seconds. Controlling that football. Little squib kick down the middle. Taken by one of the up men. And out to the 37-yard line where Big Red puts it in play first and 10. Now you're getting into the point in the ball game where they're going to need some big plays to get back in it. Yeah, you're going to have to take your shots. You're definitely going to have to take a couple plays and, and maybe have a sense of urgency, pick up the pace a little bit, you know, quicker to the huddle, quicker to the line, and get that play going. Bacon, empty backfield. Out of the shotgun. Looking to put it up. Throws it back across the green. He gets Caleb Westlake out to the 40. Gain of seven. We've seen uh, Macon complete this pass twice, and that's a, about as dangerous as it gets. Rolling out one way and trying to throw it all the way back across the field. He's, got it, he's been successful twice, but certainly something dangerous that you, do, you don't want to do on a regular basis. Kettering Alter burns a timeout here. Not sure if they had an injured player or Coach Ed Downside just wants to make sure that they're on the same page defensively. All right, well, we've got a timeout here. 10 22 up to play. Alter, 21, Big Red, nothing. Second down and three from the 40-yard line. Fourth quarter action, 10-22 left to go in the game. Steubenville needs to score and do it in a hurry. Dwight making from the shotgun, keeps it himself. He's got some running room, crosses the midfield strike down to the 45 of the Alter Knights. 
You know, Steubenville's closest game they had all season came in the playoffs a couple of weeks ago when they beat Youngstown Cardinal Moody 28 to 16. So when you get into a situation like this where you've never trailed all season long and now you're down three scores, you know, from a play calling standpoint, from a execution standpoint, you, you're in territory you haven't been all season long. Absolutely, don't know what to expect. And, and some of these guys, uh, you know, are young guys that certainly have never been there. Bacon, going deep. He's got a man, good one, 20, oh, and he dropped it. Oh, he had room to run, he was probably going to the end zone. Oh, my good one will wake up in the middle of the night wondering how this one was unable to be hauled in. Yeah, a little, little wheel route right of the backfield there by Goodwin wide open and a nice play call. Just That's kind of been the story for Steubenville today. Drop passes, penalties at the wrong time, not being able to fall on the fumbles that are on the you know, on the ground. And, and it's just been their story. It's been all, through, all day today. The ball has bounced their way today. The little things start to add up big at the end of the day. Second and two. Bacon with a roll far side. And is it complete? Yes, a nice catch made on the far side by Brandon Carroll. He did the tightrope act to get at least one foot in bounds. Yeah, nice throw and catch. Rolling out there to the left, getting your shoulders square and making a nice throw, laying the money, getting the foot down and having the concentration to, to make that catch. First and 10 from the 33. Bacon. He's got a man open, going deep. And it's a touchdown! Trey Wiggins gets behind the secondary and Macon hit him in stride. And that's the, that's the Dwight Macon you expected to see all day where you're taking shots downfield, getting vertical, not just throwing these short, you know, short routes, but right here hitting somebody vertical and, and breaking that coverage deep and putting it right on the money. Something he's done all year, but not only until today, or only until right now today. A beautifully thrown pass and a nice grab by Wiggins on the other end. That's his sixth touchdown catch of the year. 9.43 left to go in the game, and the extra point makes it a 14-point game. It's up and no good. Brandon Stover's extra point is off the mark, and it's a 21-6. Alter lead. Let's go down to the sideline. Here's Katie with him. Well, you guys have talked about Dwight making all game so far, guys. The one thing that Coach Reno told me before this game started, the best thing about this kid, his competitive spirit. No matter what's going on, this kid's always getting his team riled up. He's always fighting back. And you know what? Matt, you mentioned they need a big play right now. He came up big right there, and I think it's his competitive spirit that's really going to get this sideline going again over here, guys. Well, the problem now, Katie, is that they're running out of time. But Matt, you're in a situation with 940 three it's not like you want to start onside kicking yet but defensively you it's imperative you have to get a three and out you've got to get the ball back quickly yeah you have to and the problem is if you're going up against maybe a spread offense or a, a, an offense that throws the ball around a lot you might get a, the clock to stop here and there or maybe a, a team that can't really run the ball well but we're looking at a Kettering Alter team that that's all they do is run the football and and they eat up huge amounts of yards and huge amounts of clock. So it's time for these uh, Steubenville defenders to kind of bow up, get the ball back, and see if uh, Dwight Macon can't get on the field and start something up again. He took him 67 yards in five plays, capping it with a 33-yard touchdown pass. You got the light camera. But now they're going to have to stop that running attack, which has been a well-oiled machine here today. Stover's kick is short. Over the shoulder crab, nicely made. Down at about the 25-yard line by Thomas Armstrong. Sunday night. Join Bruce Drennan as he takes your calls and emails. He'll wrap up the high school championships, break down the Browns-Colts game, and preview baseball's winter meetings. It's all Sunday night at 7, only on STO and STO HD. All bets are on. Austin Boucher leads him out of the huddle. 42 to go. Boy.
Moreland coming in motion. And flags fly before the ball was snapped on a false start penalty. Prior to the snap, we have a dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. And Domside certainly doesn't like to see that because, Matt, you pointed out, they want to run the football. It's a lot easier to run when it's first and 10 as opposed to first and 15. Although they have broken off some runs and big chunks here today. Boucher keeps it. And down he goes at the 20-yard line, a gain of one. You can see Steubenville, they had nine men at the line of scrimmage that time. If you're at downsides, would you throw caution to the winds and fake that and try to throw and catch somebody napping maybe? I certainly think it's, it's an option. I think a little play action and, uh, and maybe hit something over the top or even something in the intermediate, intermediate range. You got to keep them honest. And, yeah. You know, there's there's a there's nine minutes left, but you know, you still got to play football. You can't get ultra conservative and all of a sudden let Student go back into this football game. Boucher is a senior quarterback and obviously a good decision maker. So we'll see what they come up with on a second and 14 play. Moreland's heading up field as a pass receiver. He's covered. Now Boucher scrambling, chucks it deep, and it's out of bounds. And Boucher's going to be a little slow getting up. He took a pretty good wallop at the end of that play. Well, they tried it. They went for the play action, and they had they went to Chris Borland, a little out and up route, and he was covered well. Now Steubenville is playing good defense right now in that secondary. That makes it tough for a quarterback to make a throw. We've seen a couple times where Boucher is, they've called a pass, and Boucher's done the smart thing and thrown that football away because there's nothing there. Third and 14. Steubenville needs a stop to have any hope to get back in the game now. Talby the motion man. Boucher pitches it wide. Borland, look out. 30, 40. Still on his feet. All the way to the 42-yard line. What a backbreaker. Boucher with a perfectly pitched football to Chris Borland, who rumbles 38 yards with it. Yeah, third and 14, and this is executed perfectly. And that's Talby right there, right on Dwight Macon. Blocking with his feet, getting good position, and, and basically escorted Borland to that first down marker and beyond. So Kettering Alter converting on a third and 14 play. With what else? Their bread and butter. So a first and 10. Boucher keeps it. Spinning, and he picks up five yards. This is a situation if you're Steubenville, you're, you're trying to get that ball out. Now there might be a guy getting to the, to the ball carrier and he's holding them up and everybody else is coming trying to strip that ball because without that football, it's gonna be tough to get back in this football game as this time's ticking down. And on the flip side, Alter, you know, they run the ball well, but if you're, if you're Boucher in the huddle, you're reminding your guys, hold on to that football, two hands. Keep two hands on the ball. Don't worry about getting those extra yards. Stay in bounds and hold on to that football. And this is where those offensive linemen, their eyes are wide as saucers because they know it's power football right now. They give it to the fullback, Hall. He gets close to the 35. It'll bring up third down and a long four. And you got three timeouts if you're big red. I know it might be a little early, but at some point here, you got to be you just got to start thinking about it. They get a stop right here. They may be thinking timeout, and hopefully uh, Alter will, will punt it away, and they get a chance to get the ball back. But they might be in the position where Alter may go for on fourth down here. They're you know they've been doing so well in this scenario. So on a third down and four situation, Borland or rather Talby in motion. Boucher fell down, pitched it out. And they're going to say he was down. Otherwise, Borland would have picked up the first down, but Boucher's knee was down before he pitched it. Yeah, that was that would have been an un unbelievable play. And I'll tell you what, Boucher has just made play after play, but this one, yeah, he's definitely down, but he tried. And this is really bad news for Steubenville. Their quarterback, Dwight Macon, playing on defense right now, slow to get up, and he's going to be helped off the field. Yeah, they're going to need him to get back in this game, no doubt, especially the way he throws that football. 
So in a fourth down situation, it looks like Alter will punt. Special teams unit coming out on the field. See if we can pick up what happened to Dwight Macon on that last play. He's number 17 in red. Look at he got tripped. And he's had his wheels tripped up a little bit, so he's jogging off the field under his own power. Appears to be okay. Borland, also the team's punter, drops back to about the 50-yard line. So that lob wedge comes back into play that we saw earlier in the game with him, and you know, he, he's kind of got a knack for putting it down, down inside that 10-20 uh, yard line. They're going to let the clock run down, probably. The play clock could run all the way down over eight seconds off. That's what they're going to do here. Or they're going to take the delay of game penalty. Yep, they're going to take the delay of game penalty. So they burn it all the way down. 6-19 remaining in the game. As that clock's running down and you're in that punt formation, you're, you're hoping that the defense maybe gets a little eager and, and comes, come, comes across that line and maybe get a free five yards, then you got a decision to make, but never, nevertheless, they win either way. They run the clock down or they get, a, they get a penalty. Borland boots it away, end over end kick. Oh, and it's gonna take a bounce and it will be down at about the 12-yard line. That was it. That was a sand wedge right there. Kind of hit and checked up like a Titleist. <laughs> sports Time Ohio is your home for Ohio sports from over 150 Indians games in high definition. Plus complete coverage of the Cleveland Browns. You're home to over 25 high school championship events. Cleveland State basketball, Mount Union football, Soapbox Derby, and of course Hall of Fame broadcaster Bruce Drennan and his show All Bets Are Off. Sports Time Ohio, your home for Ohio sports. And of course, today's broadcast of the state championship game here at Fawcett Stadium being brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Farmers put you back where you belong. First and 10 from the 11-yard line for Steubenville. And only six minutes, 11 seconds to go in the game. Bacon rolling. Shoots it downfield. And that's the thing, that was a heck of a catch. And once again, the grab is made by Brandon Carroll. He's done a nice job along the sideline a couple of times today. Yeah, catching the ball with his hands, and that's a good sign of a good receiver. You don't want to catch that with your body right there. You catch with your hands, you're bringing in, and get a big first down for your team. Bacon trying to bring the big red back under six minutes to go. He's going to pump it. He's going to go deep. Caleb Westlake brings it in at the... 41 yard line, a terrific grab by the 5'9 junior. He went up in the air, made the catch, and took the big hit. Great body control and concentration, knowing you're gonna get hit when you make this catch. Macon puts it right where he can get it, nice and high, but to hang on to that and take the hit, a nice play, something Steubenville's needed all game. Now it's coming out here late in the fourth quarter. Macon swings it wide, good one. Trying to get outside, he does. 40, 35, 30, and Town upended at the 27 yard line. Big Red has some momentum offensively. Yeah, they're moving the ball, and this was, I think, what we kind of expected, uh, you know, kind of coming into the game, but at the same time, I think Alter's defense is getting a little relaxed. They're kind of moving back, not rushing as many guys, and playing more of a soft zone and letting guys make the play. Make it. Again out of the gun. He's going to keep it and run. Yusuf with a good lead block. And make it out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Check that. They're going to mark him out at the 16. Still, it's enough for a first down for Steubenville. Yeah, and out of bounds and, and stopping that clock. He's making plays right now. They're blocking him with, with Ultra only rushing four guys and, and kind of being a little soft. It's opening up that run, that little quarterback draw. First and 10. Steubenville trying to mount a furious comeback here in the fourth quarter. Blitz coming. 
make it under pressure, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 22-yard line. They brought pressure that time. They found a crack in the offensive line, and they poured in. Yeah, and, and Macon didn't have a chance right there. When he's getting set up, there's guys in his face, and that's tough to make a throw when you're looking at white jerseys trying to throw around him, try to tuck it down and make a play, which he's done before in this game, but not on that play. Stevenville still has all three of their timeouts left. 4.40 to go, clock moving. Second down. And 16, play clock was down to one second. He gets it off, swings it wide, incomplete. That looks like maybe some confusion in calling that play and maybe where guys are supposed to end up. And, and then Dwight Macon not really sure of where to throw it. Sails that one high on that out route. But, you know, Matt, you were talking about how these guys are just football players. And I know we've been talking about Chris Borland on offense. And in defense, he usually plays the linebacker position. Right now, they got him lined up at free safety. He just said, Coach just said, get out there and make sure they don't touch the football. <laughs> don't and let them score. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Dwight Macon getting hot. He's completed five of his last six passes for 115 yards. Third and 16. Look out, here comes the blitz. Macon gets away momentarily. And he goes down back at the 38-yard line. What a job defensively. That time for the alternates, they brought pressure. They got to him and then hauled him down. And now is there a penalty flag now? No, timeout. Steubenville uses a timeout. They have two remaining. It's fourth down and forever. This is called persistence if you're a defense. Yes, especially the way making moves around. But just holding on right there for dear life, hoping your guys come with Come and help you get that sack and, and a huge loss. This is a, that was a huge play for Alter and, and it almost sets up an improbable situation for uh, for Steubenville on this fourth and long. Andrew Bonanno, a defensive tackle. Once he got a hold of Macon's jersey, he was not going to let go. It didn't matter where Macon was trying to go. He just hung on until he got some help. And for a second there, I thought he might have kind of sprung loose. And if he does, and you got to watch out because he can make a throw downfield, but. But Bonanno holding on and, and, uh, and making a play for his team. Well, you were saying how it looked like defensively, Alter may have been become a little relaxed. Well, they started to bring the pressure. Yeah. They got back to more of an aggressive mode, and it certainly paid off for the last two plays. Now, Steubenville's almost in a situation where it's like a Hail Mary type deal. You just got to chuck it deep and hope you either make a circus catch or get a penalty. And that's the key. I, I think you got to throw it up and keep it in the field of play so maybe you do get that penalty. That's something they got before half. And if you're Coach Reno Sakat, you tell Dwight Macon that. And I'm going to throw it up. Tell him to throw it up and give your guy a chance because you could, you could get that call. Alter looks like they're going to rush three and drop everybody else in the coverage. Look at this formation. A little pole cat. And a timeout called. We have a timeout. Like, Alter, because they said, whoa, what is this? Yeah, you, you got to call timeout. If the, if the other team comes out in that formation, it, it's, it's instantly you call timeout and you got to get set up. Well, this is the championship game. You pull out all the stops right here. Uh, no question. And with, and with four minutes and 15 seconds uh, left in this game, and you're Steubenville, and you got a fourth and a fourth and long here, fourth and 30, you, you got to try something. Fourth. And 30. Steubenville just, it, it, today the story's been for them, it's just a couple good plays and then a couple bad ones to follow. And when you're when you're playing like that, especially a, a team like Alter, and and, and you, know, you look at the road that they've come through, you know, they've earned their road here. It, it is tough. It is tough to beat a team as good as they are when you're taking one step forward, two steps back. This is the third meeting between these two schools. The first time they met was back in 1987 in the playoffs when they were in Division II. Then two years ago, they met for the state championship. They were in Division Three, And then this year, when Alter dropped down to Division Four because of declining enrollment, Coach Ed Domsites noticed that Steubenville had also dropped down to Division Four. So the third meeting, three times, three different divisions. The enrollment has dropped, the quality of football has not. Now fourth down, Macon running for his life. Stays alive. Can he get the throw off? He does, and it's incomplete. 
Good coverage downfield. Looked like number 12, Cody Byers, may have got a hand in there to knock it away. Yeah, and Cody Byers has three interceptions on the season, but right there, didn't need the interception. Just laid out for his team, got his right hand in the football, and, and knocks it down. That's all you need to do in that situation. You don't need to meet, make a great play. That and knocking the ball down is a great play in itself. Well, Alter's defense has done a tremendous job here today in limiting a Steubenville offense that averaged 400 yards per game and 38 points a contest. They have hounded Dwight Macon. Macon has had some spectacular plays today, but they've kept the pressure on him. And that was a big play right there by Byers to knock it away and turn it over on downs. And with only 404 remaining, Alter looking to run out the clock, and oh, what a hit in the backfield. Bronco Busick came busting through. He almost took the handoff he got there so early. Yeah, timed that blitz up perfectly and came in and made the, the big hit on Borland. And, you know, you, this guy's a defensive player uh, of the year in Division Four, and, and he's kind of been contained a little bit. He's kind of been kept off balance, but right there he makes a big play, and he knows as he looks up at that clock, he's got to start making plays or, you know, or this, game may, this game may be over. Not to make excuses, but I noticed that Busick has been hobbling a little bit. Obviously, he's got a knee or a leg injury that's limited him, perhaps, in his pursuit of the ball carriers. But a guy like that would probably have to be missing an appendage to miss this kind of a game. Uh, I mean, that, you could say that for everybody on this field. You know, these Steubenville players, you know, they're tough, and, and you know, that's how their you know, coach Sawcox was saying. You no, know, we don't have 15 D1 guys on the, on, on, the, on the field, but we got a lot of guys that love to play high school football that give it up for their, their team and their community, and they want to go out there and play their best football because of the guys that played before them and the guys they're going to play after them. And Coach Ed Domsites on the other side of this field. As you said, they've earned their way here. They had to beat the defending state champion, Coldwater. That, they had a heck of a battle last week with Genoa. Or Genoa that they beat 28-27, so... They were their way here without a doubt. And now, they are less than four minutes away from a state championship. Hall takes it out across the 40-yard line. Brings up third down. And we talked about this offense is just the perfect offense you want to run when you get ahead. I mean, when you this is the kind of offense you think about. If you're down, you know, three, four scores, it may be a little bit tougher. But when you're up a couple scores, you can just grind it out. And that's something they've been doing all day, just pushing the Steubenville defensive line around. Third and six for the Alter Knights. Talby in motion. Boucher on the keeper. And he's got a first down. Out to the 47-yard line. Let's go back down to the sidelines once again. Here's Katie with him. Guys, when I spoke with Ed Domsites before today's game, I asked him what is special about this year's team, and he said it's definitely their ability to overcome. You know, they had a couple of key guys go out really early in the season with injuries, and then, you know, you guys talked about the two games, their 12-2 and two record, two by forfeit, and, he, and Coach just told me, you know, they have had the ability to overcome. They knew they'd have to win out to make the playoffs. They knew playing Steubenville today, they would have to overcome some challenges and talk about going through what they've gone through and possibly getting their first state title here tonight. It makes it all worthwhile, guys. Well, Katie, you talked about overcoming adversity, and I think for, for Kettering Alter, on the offense, knowing that they would have to beat Steubenville in the state championship, added a little more to, to the game, added a little more spice to the dish, if you will, because they lost to this team two years ago by a single extra point in a game in which they missed two extra points during the football game. So I think there was a, a, a lot uh, for Alter coming into this game by way of uh, motivation and by way of wanting to uh, come back here and redeem themselves by winning the state championship. And they have played a well in the football game. And they have, and it was kind of funny before the game, you sense the mutual respect. In fact, Chris Borland goes up to Dwight Macon and he says, you know, they're talking, they're chit-chatting, and having, kind of having a good time talking before the game. And we kind of look at each other. Do these, you know, do these guys know each other? And you come to find out they don't. They just kind of have respect for each other because of these two programs and, and kind of where, they, where they've come in you know, these last, you know, last four, five, six years and, and, and beyond, to be honest with you. Well, for Steubenville, Big Red, this uh, will be a disappointing defeat. But as Reno Sukash said, 
we keep football in perspective in Steubenville. Yeah, it's big. Yes, it's important. But he said, you know what? When I go home tonight, I still got to take the garbage out. Now, when we win, my neighbor brings the cans back up to the house. When we lose, he leaves them out there for me to get. But he said at the end of the day, it's about raising kids, giving them, you know, football to help them. Uh, but at the end of the day, every four years, a new batch of guys comes in, you know, high school, you, you know, you continue to. And I think that's what's impressive is that year in and year out, they're here. They're in the playoffs every single year. Yeah, they're just an unbelievable program. You look at all the stats and the records, it's, it's just, it's mind boggling. And, and the tradition is just, just second to none. 2.34 to go. Boucher on the keeper inside the 40 down to the 36 yard line. And now the alternates can feel it. That's the other thing when you play defense against an offense like this, it's a relentless rushing attack that just starts to wear you down late in the game. Oh, no question. And we were talking about the size of, of, of the guys from, from Alta. We talked about their offensive line. They're all their, the four of their backs are over 200 pounds. I mean, these are guys you're tackling play after play, and, and that, can, that can wear you out. I don't care who you are. Boucher is a terrific quarterback who can throw the ball well, and yet they've only had to throw it one time in this half. There's Borley. Still on his feet down to the 30-yard line. Stewart will try to tackle at the football, trying to rip it out. As the clock moves under, two minutes. You know, Matt, that stat you said with, with Boucher only throwing one pass tells me at halftime, I think Coach Domsitz sides just said, you know what, we can we can just grind them out. I think after one half of football, they realized we can run the football. We're not gonna, we don't need to throw. We're going to grind it out and find a way to win this football game, especially being up 7 nothing. They thought if they can control the ball, there's no way Stubenville can get back into this thing. Under a minute and a half to go. Austin Boucher. Turns, gives, Boylan outside. Another first down, still on his feet, spins inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. Chris Boylan has had a tremendous game here in the state championship for the Alter Knights. Yeah, and, and he just seems so relaxed along with the rest of uh, his teammates. They, they just seem to be in control and confident all day. They, they showed up with a purpose, and, and, and they've come out and executed. In fact, Alter has controlled the ball 16 minutes and 30 seconds this half. Talk about just controlling a football game and, and, and going and getting that state championship trophy. Boucher keeper inside the 15-yard line. And I think now Coach Ed Domsites knows all they have to do is sit on the football and it's over. And this unbelievable tradition over there at Kevin and Alter to get their first state championship and, and to be, to have it against Steubenville, it just probably makes it that much sweeter, as you mentioned. And to do it here at Fawcett Stadium, where Reno Sakai said, hey, think of all the great players who yeah. have played here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton. It's an honor just to come here and be able to play. That's going to do it. Honor takes a knee. They are the Division Four state champions. A 21-6 victory over Steubenville Big Red. Dom Sites, no longer a bridesmaid. He'll be able to hoist the championship trophy here this evening. Let's go down to Katie with him. She's with Ed Dom Sites. Coach, congratulations. Thank Alder's you. Thank first you. ever state yeah, title. First, first oh, what did you football. think? Well, I thought it was going to be a tough ball game. It was a tough ball game. Uh, our kids came out and played well, really, first and second half. We were able to put a few more points on the board in the second half. Defense did a great job against an offense. They, they've got an amazing offense. Our defense did a great job. Uh, it's just been uh, it's been that kind of year. Maybe uh, with all we went through uh, early in the year, maybe we maybe the destiny was on our side here. Austin Boucher, Chris Borland, a lot of guys having uh, a lot of success yeah. tonight. What was the key, you think? Well, I think anytime the offense is, ha is having success, uh, the offensive line is uh, the, the, the ones we need to thank uh, for that. But I think that those are some those are some great athletes. Thanks, some great athletes. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, thanks, Katie.
You have to feel good for a guy like Ed Domside to, you know, he's been after it for a long time. He's been at it a long time as a head coach. And to get close a couple of years ago and lose by a single point, have a chance to come back and do it again and to win, and to win really convincingly, I think, has to be all the more sweeter for him here tonight. Yeah, and he's had so much success over the years. I mean, he's had a 75% winning percentage, but just kind of couldn't get that state championship. And, and now he has it, and, and no one can take it away from him. And on the other side, you know, for Reno Sukkosh, yeah, he's had a lot of success, and yeah, there's great tradition. But Matt, for these kids, they only have a four-year window. So their opportunities, their, their chances are so very slim. Now, a lot of these guys were here two years ago when they won the state championship, but it doesn't take away the sting of defeat that they're feeling right now. No, and, and I think it's even a bigger, a bigger sting because of the program Studentville is. The expectations are so high. I mean, if uh, maybe another school that has, has had as much success as Studentville has over the years gets to the state championship game and loses, it's a great season. And it still is a great season. But for these guys, the expectation is so high that you're expected to win you know, the state championship every year in and year out. And there's no reason why you shouldn't with the kind of program they have and the kind of community they have that backs them. But tonight, it's the Alter Knights that will be able to celebrate Taking home the championship hardware for Dwight Macon, a disappointment tonight, but remember, he's only a junior. So he and I believe the Big Red will be back in full force again next year. Once again, let's go down onto the field. Here's Katie with him. Chris, first ever state title for Alder. Has it sunk in yet? Uh, not yet, I'm just really excited. It was a great game and uh, props to Big Red, they're, they're a hell of a team. You and Austin had a lot of, of success on the field today. Great combinations between the two of you. I mean, what was going through your mind on some of those runs? Um, the line just opened up giant holes, and from then on, it was instincts. But the line did a great job, and the coaches did a great job of play calling, so it was there. Any any special celebration planned out for the team tonight? Uh, no, just glad to be with the guys after this. This is amazing. So just going to hang out with the guys and just live it up. Congratulations, Thank Chris. You. Thanks, Katie. Chris Borland did a terrific job. I was really impressed with his ability to catch the football today. Made some great catches, scored right here on a touchdown catch early. But then in the second half, he got into the act running the football, and it's that downhill running style that was very impressive. Yeah, this guy is, is, is a football player. You talked about it, just every essence of the word. We're talking about offense, defense, making plays, making blocks. And, and that's why Alter is where they are, is because they got great leadership and guys like that. And let's face it, you know, he talked about it. You play 15 weeks during the regular season. To say nothing uh, about uh, training camp and getting ready, but then 15, 10 weeks, and then playoffs, 15 games that you play. Uh, these guys have been through a lot together, and so that's, I think, why it makes it even uh, more special for these guys that will celebrate this championship for years and years to come. Oh, no question. They'll be talking about this thing forever, 15, 20, 30 years from now. And, and, and in fact, uh, they'll be referring to this team as other teams come through. And, and you've got to be proud if you're a senior to be a part of that. And you know, that's how they're going to remem remember you as a senior class, as the senior class that won the state championship in 2008. And something special about being the first, too. Yes, absolutely. The first team in all through school history. That's a pretty good show of respect right there as they come to the 40-yard line to give Steubenville a round of applause for accepting the runner-up trophy. Yeah, and the respect they have, you know, these teams have for each other is, is and I know the same we have for up here. Before the game, we were talking, this is going to be the, the best game and the most anticipated game of the weekend, and, and we knew they were going to be tough football players, and, and it's nice to see the sportsmanship from Alter as, as, as Steubenville gets the trophy. Once again, we go down to Katie with him. She's with Austin Boucher. Austin, congratulations. First ever Alder State title. What's going through your mind right now? Uh, we're, we're on cloud, cloud nine right now. I mean, it's awesome. We, we all wanted this so, so bad from, from, from the first game of the season. It came down to it. We, we, the team chemistry, the motivation was there. I mean, because they, they had an 06, and it was, it was our time. And, we, and we, we came together, and we made it happen. Was that 06 game kind of in the back of your mind Heck at yeah. any point today? Heck, yeah. I mean, they're a student of the Hega team. They have a rich tr tr tradition. And, but, I mean, we, we came out with the fight, and we, we wanted it, and it, it came in our favor. It was an awesome game, awesome it, game. It seemed like in the third quarter, time of possession definitely in your guys' favor. You had a lot of success running the ball. What was the biggest key for you guys? The biggest key was just staying on our blocks and uh, holding on to, to, to the ball. We had a few, few, 
We had a few breaks. We lost it a little bit, but we got our blocks. We made it happen. It was it was just awesome. We got the blocks, the team chemistry. We came together, just kept on moving the ball. Great job. Congratulations to you. Th th thank you. Guys. Austin Boucher had a terrific day running the football, running the offense. You know, people think about that wishbone and think, well, it's just a running off. You still have to read a lot as a quarterback and make great decisions. Yeah, there's a lot on your plate, and the, and the coach is entrusting you to run that offense as if he's out there or he's in your ear, and, uh, and he made great decisions uh, not only all season long but specifically today and enough to lead his team to the state championship. And congratulations to the Steubenville Big Red, runner-up this year in Division Four. But it was Alter's day here this uh, this afternoon as uh, Austin Boucher. Uh, I, you know, I think he, uh, you know, he, he summed it up pretty well uh, for Katie. Anybody who doesn't think that what happened in 06 was the fact, all you had to hear, he was, uh -huh, absolutely, we were thinking about it all week. And yeah, there was only one guy that started that game for each of the respective schools, but they were all here. They all remember it. They were still part of the program, and so that was definitely motivation for the Alter Knights. Let's go down to the field. Here's Assistant Commissioner of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, Steve Neal. He's, uh, he's given Steubenville their runner-up trophy. And now the Alter Knights take the podium. The Alter Knights finish the season officially 13 and two. Statistically, Ladies and gentlemen, before presenting the championship trophy for Division Four, Rob Steinberg will present a commemorative 2008 state championship game football to the outstanding football team and Division Four state champion, Kettering Archbishop Alter High School. are your Division IV state champions by virtue of a convincing 21-6 win over Steuben, Steubenville Big Red here at Fawcett Stadium in Canton, Ohio on a chilly afternoon. And as night fell, there was no doubt about it. The best team in Division IV this year is Archbishop Kettering Alter. Yeah, no question. They came to play. They came with a purpose. And, it, and it's just a cool sight to see them up on the on the uh, stand there to get to get that trophy and then run over to their, their fans and give them a round of applause and say thank you. Archbishop Alter, we talked about their running attack, and I think they knew they were going to have to score some points to win the game, but I'm not sure they knew that they were going to be able to shut down Steubenville's offense the way they did here today. No, I don't think anybody expected that, uh, and, but I just think they came out with a game plan that worked, and they flew around and played hard, uh, hard physical football, and, you know, and it worked for them. Offensively, they had a couple of big plays in the first half. They turned that into a touchdown, and then in the second half, they really, I think, imposed their will. Like, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna run the football. They only threw it one time, and they dominated the second half of this football game. Look at the final numbers. 303 to 88 rushing. 
And about 100 yards difference in total offense. But yeah. the time of possession certainly was big. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head right there. That was that second half, as you said, imposed their will, and they came out and just controlled that football, controlled this football game. Once again, we go down to the field with Katie with him. Thank you, Matt. I am here with Paul Dietzberger. You, you guys talked about him in the broadcast, the former head coach of Ed Dom Sites. Coach, what did you think of your former players' performance and coaching here tonight? I was, I'm thrilled for Ed. He's deserved it. He's a great coach. I've seen him coach at Trotwood. I've seen him coach at Northmont and at Alder, and I've just been thrilled with his career, and uh, he really deserves it. All the, all the hard work he puts in, he does a great job. Well, you know what, his first ever state title here with Ketterington Alter. If you could say, I'm, I'm sure you're proud right now, but if you could tell him something or say anything to him right now, what would you tell him? <laughs> I love him. I'm proud of him. <laughs> I feel like a father, really. <laughs> I'm, but he, he was great. He called a great game today, too. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Guys, let's send it back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Katie. Paul Deansberger was also the former head coach at my alma mater down at Ashland High School and uh, has certainly seen a lot of high school football during his days, but how... How gratifying that must be to be a coach, to have coached a young man, to watch him grow up, and to watch that guy go on to win a state championship here today. Yeah, and that's what makes it special to you know to have your former coach here and you know have a have a loyal guy that you you want to make you know proud, make him feel proud, and you go out there and you win a state championship, and you know he says I love you, and you know I'm proud of you, and nothing's better feeling than that. Well, partner, it was fun. Enjoyed it. Yes, thank you. That was an unbelievable experience. Well, for Matt DeRazio, I'm Matt Underwood. That's going to wrap up our uh, coverage here at Fawcett Stadium, where the Archbishop Alter Knights beat Steubenville for the Division IV State Championship 21-6. Stay tuned. We'll go back to the Farmers Insurance Studio Show with Mark Schwab and Jim Isabella when we come back.